Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Raul, can I pick on you a little bit? Do it. Okay. I, was that Raul's voice? Probably not. I want to read what in the Old Testament, that's kind of the kicker. So David sent his messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he laid with her. It's like, bam, what we don't want to talk about. <laughs> the sin that we want to hide from that we don't want to talk about. <laughs> You know, we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving on Wednesday. And it's interesting because when those Puritans came, well, you need to be a certain way. <laughs> Even when the Lutherans came and the bishop from Germany came to set up the Lutheran church, you've got to be a certain way. You've got to do this and don't do that. But I want to tell you a little story when the Lutheran bishop came. You see, when he came, they, were, they went over to Missouri, and they were planting churches all around. And then guess what? Something was discovered about the bishop. <laughs> it wasn't good. The bishop was sleeping with members of the churches. I don't know if you ever heard that story, <laughs> but it's true. And they were, they were perplexed because they're like, are we a church? Is everything we've done in vain? Well, they discovered, no, it is by the word of God, not the purity of the pastor or the bishop. Now, he was ousted. As we do any pastor, you're ousted, you're gone. And guess what? The church has prevailed and continued to spread. But you can't hide sin. David tried hiding it. David killed Bathsheba's wife or her husband. Killed him to hide it. And then things got worse for David because he was trying to hide it. We try to hide. We don't want to let our neighbor know what we've done. Now, maybe we haven't slept with our neighbor. Hopefully that's not true. I mean, hopefully that hasn't happened. Um, but all the same, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed by things we have done and things we have not done, not finished. And then let me ask you, when you hear this, when you hear, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, what do you think? Are you thinking, what in the world were you thinking, Pastor, when you picked that for the gospel? Where is the good news in that? <laughs> You ever think that? You ever see that and you hear that and you're hearing the law? You're hearing, do this, don't do that. I mean, after all, that's what the Pharisees were, were after Jesus for. They saw it as law. But how do we love our God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our might? How do we do that? How do we do that when bad things happen? How do we do that when time after time there's death upon death upon death upon death, sickness upon sickness upon sickness? Do you ever get perplexed about that? I know way too many people have died in the last six months. 
it gets trying. People sick, it gets trying on, on you, on me. It gets trying. And it's like, God, what are you doing? Stop this pandemic. What are you doing? He didn't create it, but he could stop it. To love the Lord your God is to trust him fully. Not that we pretend we have wings and we jump off the cliff. <laughs> I think he's given us some brains. But to just trust him that through it we will be okay one way or the other. Not that we don't fear so I believe fear keeps us safe, along with hand sanitizer. <laughs> I mean, that kind of your fear drives you to, you know, make sure your hands are sanitized and stuff. A good thing. The mask, a good thing. But when you f fear and we fear God, don't be afraid of him. I think David was afraid that he was going to get squished. He was going to be destroyed. But are we, if we tell God our sin and ask for forgiveness, is he going to destroy us? Is he that kind of God? Raul, is he that kind of God? That he would destroy us? You can answer. I'm looking for some feedback. No. No, of course he's not. So what in the world was David thinking? Oh, and by the way, what was Adam thinking when he thought, well, <laughs> I can hide from God. It's like God was playing along and says, where are you? <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has found that humorous, but I do. God knew where he was. Just giving him a chance to acknowledge what he had done. And the same he does with us. Now, my wife told me to be careful because otherwise this sermon's going to go on for a while because I'm not using notes. Always gets me in trouble. But our Lord, our God, in David's Psalm 51, when David said, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love according to your great compassion that is our God he didn't have to hide he doesn't have to hide we don't have to hide God sent Jesus down to the earth he did not come to condemn us he came to save us We always think of the condemning. Look at the Ten Commandments. Get the first three are for God. The rest, it's about us. Why do you think that is? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. Why do you think the commandments are like that? And why do you think the greatest commandment? If we love the Lord our God with all our heart and all our soul, we trust him. We trust what he has done in Jesus. We trust that his word is doing something in us. Every time we hear it, when we receive his body and blood, he is doing something in us. We receive that by faith. That out of that flows, out of that faith is flowing love for concern for our neighbor. And if we love our neighbor, we're not going to kill them. We're not going to sleep with their wife. We're not going to steal their stuff. Yeah, on and on and on and on. But even though we don't steal or the other things, they're smaller things that keep getting in our way. But Jesus, in Jesus, we have forgiveness. He has covered our sins. 
His blood covers all our inequities, all our sins. And when we go before the throne, when Jesus comes back, God sees us Christians as pure. Because he is working in our hearts, continually drawing us to repentance. And he is continually forgiving us. We are not saved by what we do. We are saved by our faith wholly. But our faith is ever growing, and out of that will come love. But it will not be perfected until Jesus returns. But we don't give up. We keep striving. We keep forgiving each other when we fail. We keep asking him for forgiveness, and he freely gives it. And we struggle together until he comes again. The Ten Commandments are to keep us safe. The last seven. The first three are for God. He will continue to work in you, hearing the word. That is why we want bucks in the pews. <laughs> so all might be saved. So all, even on, at home, on video, that they know our Lord and Savior forgives you just for the asking. And he will work inside your heart and cleanse you from all unrighteousness, from all your sins. And sometimes people slip back. I say repeat. Ask for forgiveness again. You fail, repeat. You fail, repeat. God will purify you. You will have movement towards loving your neighbor. Might not be immediately, but you will have movement. Because he is doing that inside of you. May God be with you always. Amen.